its object is one which no American When President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965 into law, it was a day that changed America. Wherever, by clear and objective standards, states and counties are using regulations or laws or tests to deny the right to vote, then they will be struck down. Reverend Jesse Douglas, a co-laborer and friend of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was one of many civil rights leaders fighting for African Americans' right to vote. Really, it was our job to defend their rights and to stand up for them to be counted. Douglas helped spearhead the movement to register voters in Alabama, where they faced very strong resistance. We were working together in order to secure our rights, but it was not easy. It was not easy. Tell me about that, about it not being easy. The white people who resented it would appear at places and try to exert their brutalities, you know, spitting on people, uh, slapping them, pushing them down. Despite the brutality, Douglas, like Dr. King, stressed nonviolent protest as a means to demonstrate their opposition to the status quo. The approach that you talked about with nonviolence and from a Christian perspective, how did you get people convinced to go that route when it goes against human nature? Well, the persons who participated had to sign papers promising that they would not violate our nonviolent procedure of demonstration. Dr. King got us to realize that hate only provokes hate, that violence only provokes violence, and that uh, love is the greatest force on earth. That philosophy would be tested on March 7, 1965. 600 peaceful demonstrators gathered in Selma, Alabama to march 50 miles to Montgomery, the state capital. But on the far side of the Edwin Pettus Bridge, just outside of Selma, State troopers blocked the marchers and attacked them with billy clubs and tear gas. The national media covered this travesty that became known as Bloody Sunday. The eyes of the nation had been drawn to that situation as a result of the brutality exerted on the people of Selma. Then on March 25th, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with Reverend Douglas at his side led over 25,000 protesters to Montgomery. This time, by order of the president, he marched under the protection of the federal government. Five months later, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965 into law, giving African Americans the right to vote without facing discrimination at the state and local levels. It was a major step toward racial equality, but the fight was far from over. It took time and some people died. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, we anticipated that. But they were doing it for the benefit of their children and their children's children. And they made up in their mind that they were willing to sacrifice their lives. One of those sacrifices devastated Douglas and their cause. On April 4th, 1968, Dr. King was shot and killed at a hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. The news struck me like somebody had taken a dagger and pierced me in the heart. I couldn't react. I guess it was one of the greatest hurt that I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Thank you. I love the man. <laughs> it has seemed like what was being fought for went with him. It did halt the movement for a while because everybody was in mourning. The nation was in mourning. Over the years, Douglas has continued fighting for the rights of African Americans. He's also been a devoted family man and pastor. Now 85, he fondly remembers his time spent with Dr. King as they envisioned an America where everyone is treated equally. 
before he preached, before he spoke, I would sing his favorite song, which was, I told Jesus, it would be all right if you changed my name. What does that mean? When your name is changed, you're changed from a sinner to a saint, and you become committed to Christ and his mission. You're a changed person, you've been born again. Oh, I told Jesus it would be all right if he changed my name.